Paramount Global is down more than 50% from where Warren Buffett himself was buying into the business. Is it a potential buy now? We're using the Select 6 analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating a fair value for Paramount Global. Then we're giving a rating to the business. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing Paramount Global for your stock portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand Paramount stock performance. Right now, Paramount Global trades for $13.68 per share. Year to date, things have been very rough for the business. They're down 20% while the S&P 500 is up more than 15%. Paramount's underperforming the market. Paramount was formed in December of 2019 via the merger of Viacorp and CBS. The company changed its name in February of 2022. Back in March of 2021, Viacorp was involved in a short squeeze. This famously led to the failure of Archigos Capital, who was heavily exposed to the business as when its stock price sharply declined. This track record is looking at Viacom as a business. Going back before the global financial crisis in the last 17 and a half years, Viacom stock was down nearly 50%. Keep in mind, this doesn't include the dividends the company paid throughout this time, which would be in addition to this stock performance. Right now, Paramount trades just a dollar above its 52-week low. The company's down nearly 50% from its 52-week highs. There's a lot of short interest in the business, with 12.5% of its shares being sold short. Paramount's a decent-sized company. They have an $8.5 billion market cap, but they have a lot of debt. They have a $24.5 billion enterprise value. But the burning questions are, why did Warren Buffett himself and other super investors buy into Paramount? And is the company still worth you looking at? Paramount Global is the rebranded recombination of CBS and Viacom that has created a media conglomerate with global scale. CBS contributed Showtime in addition to its TV assets, the CBS TV network, 28 local TV stations, and 50% of CW a joint venture between CBS and Warner Media. Viacom brought several leading cable network properties, including Nickelodeon, MTV, BET, Comedy Central, VH1, CMT, and Paramount. Paramount Pictures produces original motion pictures and owns a library of 2,500 films, including the Mission Impossible and Transformer series. Paramount operates a number of streaming services, most notably Paramount Plus and Pluto TV. Now let's look at the numbers. Paramount's combined operating history is only going to cover a year here. Typically, in metric number one, we want their average return on capital to be above 14%. These prior years are going to be for Viacom. They produce 5.2% returns in their last 12 months. When Viacom's numbers are averaged into this, it's about a 12% return on capital. That's solidly above a typical company, which is coming in around 7%, but that's down a couple percentage points from our benchmark. This means this is an X on metric number one for Paramount. Again, this is much more of a snapshot based on them having a shorter track record. Metric number two, we're looking for growth. We want to see five-year revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth. These all need to be up for this to be a check. In this time, Paramount's revenues have grown by 13%. The company's net incomes were positive as the Viacom business itself. They're now negative. This is due to $2.7 billion of restructuring charges in their last 12 months alone, which doesn't show up on this chart. Their free cash flows have also swung from being positive to negative. For Paramount, this is an X on metric number two. Metric number three, we're looking for earnings per share growth. We just learned their net incomes of their earnings have gone from being positive to negative. At the same time, due to their merger, Paramount issued some additional shares, although they've been slightly reducing their share count since. In this time, they've diluted shareholders by 4.5%, and again because their net incomes or their earnings are now negative, this has led to them having negative earnings per share. Another X here on metric number 3 means we're still looking for our first check of the day. Metric number four, we're looking for free cash flow per share growth. This is almost the same story. Their free cash flows are negative. With the shareholder dilution, this is also negative free cash flow per share. This is an X on metric number four. In recessions, it's businesses with a lot of debt that can have the biggest losses or even go bankrupt. Metric number five, we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the sum of their free cash flows in their last five fiscal years. Again, Paramount has had negative free cash flows as a combined business. Previously, Viacom produced $6.4 billion of free cash flow in these last five years. While the combined company has spent $11 billion in paying down their debt over this time, their net debt today is still double their free cash flows in their last five years. This is another X on metric number five. Before we get to our valuations, let's cover our bonus. As our bonus, we want Paramount's dividends to be supported by their free cash flows. 
That was the case in three of these last five years. Viacom supported their dividends in three of the last four years, although their dividend was barely unsupported in 2021. With negative free cash flows per share in 2022, Paramount still paid out a dividend. They have not supported this since. Recently, Paramount cut their dividend by 85%. Before this, they were paying out a huge 5.91% dividend yield. But again, that's cut by 85%. Warren Buffett had comments to say about this in Berkshire Hathaway's annual public shareholders meeting when he said that anytime a company cuts its dividends like this, it's not necessarily a great sign. But we'll see. Still, with the high amount of leverage that the business has, this likely gives the company's management more flexibility in how they're allocating their cash flow. One thing to note too about their debt is that it has long dated maturities for the most part, with not a lot of their debt coming due in the near future. Still, because they cut their dividends and their dividends are not supported by the free cash flows, these being negative, this is an X on our bonus. Does Paramount have what it takes to beat the odds and get a check on metric number six? The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want Paramount's average free cash flow divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this gives a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It's the first of two different ways we're estimating a fair value for Paramount. Right now, the company has a $24.5 billion enterprise value. This is the lowest it's been in their last year. Enterprise value accounts for both the company's net debt and their market cap. It looks at the business similar to it being a private company. In the last five years, we learned Viacom, one of the companies merged into Paramount, produced $6.4 billion of free cash flow, meaning they produced $1.3 billion in an average year. When that's divided by their $24.5 billion enterprise value, we actually get a 5.3% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. That's coming in both above the yield of the 10-year treasury and the risk premium we were looking for. On a current basis, however, again, Paramount's free cash flows are now negative, so they have a negative current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. Still, we're looking at a historical basis for the company, and while it was just one component of Paramount, this is actually a check on metric number six. Don't just run out and go buy the business. We still need to estimate their fair value per share and talk about our rating. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that, in my opinion, is the main reason to analyze Paramount which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to estimate their fair value per share. A DCF model is based on the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Like any model in any discipline, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. Paramount only has a couple years as a combined business, meaning their business predictability is very low compared to what we're normally looking at. This makes this a rough ballpark estimate for the company. We're starting with an average of free cash flows from their last few years. Then we're using assumptions for how their industry's grown. It's up to you to figure out if these will be accurate or not for Paramount going forward. Assuming they grow their average free cash flows at a rate of 4% annually for the next 10 years. Then in the following decade, assuming that these grow at 3% annually, we'll add in their tangible book value to give an estimate of their net worth. If we want a 15% rate of return, which is what Warren Buffett looks for from his investments, again, Warren Buffett's invested in Paramount. From today's valuation multiples, if they're the same 20 years into the future, a rough estimate of Paramount's fair value per share is around $14. That's just slightly above their current stock price, meaning even if he paid double the current share price, Warren Buffett may still have a salvageable result from his investment in Paramount. At least that's a potential. Keep in mind some key points. Again, due to the company's short track record, this analysis is less accurate than it would be for some other businesses. Keep in mind this discount rate is based on their returns from their free cash flows. Right now, the company has negative free cash flows, and historically, this discount rate has included their dividend yield. Most importantly, this analysis isn't financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decision. In just a minute, we'll give our rating to Paramount. But we need to address something first. We've covered the numbers, but the qualitative factors may be even more important for their business. Why don't we find out what they are? Starting with the factors supporting a long thesis. Number one, high quality content is tough to build from scratch, and CBS owns one of the most successful television production studios. Number two, Paramount Plus is poised to gain market share and drive top line growth. Number three, CBS owns valuable sports rights, including the NFL, the NCAA's March Madness, and college football. This popular programming gives CBS leverage in negotiations with pay TV distributors for retransmission fees and with advertisers interested in the live viewing audience. Keep in mind some of that may be on shakier ground due to the recent 
Due to the recent dispute between Charter and Disney, also most likely Buffett's investment thesis in Paramount, they have a number of assets that would likely be worth a lot if they were chopped up and sold. This, The company sold their book publisher, Simon & Schuster, to private equity firm KKR for roughly $1.65 billion. They also recently announced, though, that they did drop their plans to sell their BET stake, which was actively being shopped around. It wouldn't be fair if we didn't cover the negative factors of their business as well. Looking at those supporting a short thesis, number one, Paramount's business model depends on the continued growth of retransmission, reverse compensation, and affiliate fees. Increased cord cutting by consumers and lower ratings could threaten the growth of these fees. Number two, if advertisers shift money away from the broadcast networks, profitability at Paramount will also fall rapidly because of the high operating leverage of the television business model. Number three, developing hit programs can be unpredictable, especially as Viacom CBS is trying to develop more shows internally. Also, Paramount Global is dealing with the Hollywood strike negotiations currently. That's something to keep in mind as well. There you have it for a balanced perspective of some of their qualitative factors. Now let's give our rating. In analyzing Paramount Global, stock ticker P-A-R-A, we learned that Paramount Global was likely an investment by Warren Buffett himself, who at cost basis allocated around 1% of Berkshire Hathaway's public stock portfolio into Paramount. Paramount's also owned by Christopher Bloomstrand, a well-known Buffett follower, as well as John Rogers, David Katz, and by Tweety Brown. As a result of Viacom and CBS's merger, the company has a short operating track record, but it didn't look like they were faring too great on our analysis. They've taken nearly $3 billion of restructuring charges. If the combined company is able to get back to their past profitability as separate companies, the business may potentially look attractive compared to the 10-year treasury. Also, Paramount Global could be an asset play, with parts of the company being spun off or sold outright like we've been seeing. Paramount Global is primarily owned by the Redstone family through their national amusement stake. Also, it's worth noting one of Warren Buffett's main point of contacts and his banker for many years at Goldman Sachs took a position in Paramount through loan facilities to the business. There could be more deal making going on in their future. Again, this isn't financial advice. When we performed our discounted cash flow analysis, based on today's valuation multiples, if they're the same 20 years into the future, if you want a 15% rate of return and based on these assumptions, it looks like an estimate of Paramount Global's fair value per share is around $14. That's slightly higher than today's current stock price. When we look at all the factors of our analysis, Paramount looks like a modest candidate for further research. Thanks so much for learning about Paramount with me. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel for more and check out this next one.